Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for this evening comes from Luke chapter 23, verses 6 through 12. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform some miracle. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. This is the word of our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a couple times a week, I try to get up in the mornings and go to the YMCA. Normally, I start my workout by running on the, on the elliptical machine for about a half an hour. Since I am trying to do something in the athletic area and because I, I tire quickly of, of watching all of the rest of the news that's going on right now, I usually, when I run, turn on ESPN and watch Sports Center. But lest you think that all is well in the world of sports, I present for your consideration Johnny Manziel. Now you may or may not know the name, and if you don't, that's okay. All you need to know is that he's an NFL quarterback who is on the fast track toward destroying his career and his life because he's throwing away every opportunity that has been given to him along the way. He was highly acclaimed coming out of high school, but there were real questions about his maturity. Then he got to college, started his college career, and he took the NCAA by storm. He even won the Heisman Trophy as a freshman, the first person to ever do that. But again, there were serious questions about whether he had his head screwed on straight because he had a few too many incidents with a little over-partying and doing too much messing around that an underage kid shouldn't have done. And then he became a high draft pick in the NFL, making the big bucks, and he was supposed to be the next great thing with a, a big future in front of him if he could stay out of trouble. <clears throat> well, he hasn't. He's had substance abuse problems, partying problems. He's had problems with a lack of professionalism and commitment to his team. He's had run-ins with the law, refusals to accept intervention, or go through rehabilitation. Now last I heard, he's about to be cut by the team that drafted him, and not another team in the league is willing to touch him with a 10-foot pole, I might add. And even his own father has come out and said on record about him that if he doesn't get help soon, he might not make it to his next birthday. How terribly sad. This man who has been given so many special opportunities that so few people ever get a chance to experience, and they're totally wasted. Now I will say that fortunately there is still time for Johnny Manziel to turn things around. But unfortunately, that is not the case for Herod Antipas, who had much greater, much greater opportunities in front of him than Johnny Manziel could have ever dreamed about. Unfortunately for him, his fate is sealed. You see, it's not every day you get a personal audience with the Son of God in flesh, the promised Messiah who was coming to save the world. But if you did, do you honestly think it's the best use of your time to ask Him to do magic tricks? No, Herod only wanted to be entertained. Well, what he really needed was to be trained. He thought that he was the king in this situation and that his word carried all the weight. Well, how wrong he was. 
Herod was really only a puppet of the Roman Empire who ruled in Galilee and Perea, small areas in the northern part of Israel. But the man who stood before him humbly and silently was in fact the king of heaven and earth who properly bowed to no one, but rather bowed instead willingly to suffering and death out of love for his people. I mean, how ironic could this scene be? Here was Herod on the one hand, in the grand scheme of things, really a nobody who thought he was really a somebody and who wanted to hear Jesus, wanted to see Jesus only for entertainment value rather than for eternal value. Then on the other hand, there was Jesus, almighty, eternal, immortal God, the Word made flesh, standing there beaten and bloodied and silent before his accusers like a lamb to the slaughter about to die on a Roman cross. It just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem fair. It seems so backwards. But thanks be to God that it was. Because that's the way it had to be for God to win salvation for this world. You know, maybe it shouldn't have been that way. But that's the way it had to be if Jesus was going to finish His mission and bring us forgiveness and life. He had to carry our sins to the cross and He needed Herod and Pontius Pilate to sign off on it. Yes, it is ironic and and sad that it had to happen in this way, but certainly no more sad and ironic than that it had to happen at all in the first place. This never would have happened if we hadn't fallen into sin. Only because of our sinfulness did Jesus ever have to come. Only because of our sinfulness was Herod too full of himself to see that though he had wanted to see Jesus as a sideshow, God had actually wanted him to see Jesus as his Savior. And only because of our sinfulness did Jesus have to die and rise. How ironic is it that the perfect God should lower Himself to death in order that imperfect humanity could be raised to everlasting life. How ironic is it that Almighty God should reveal Himself not in majesty, but in meekness. And how ironic is it that God wants to have anything to do with us at all anymore, much less willingly subject Himself to torture and accusation and mockery for our sake. Ironic, yes. But see here how much your Savior loves you. See here how far your Savior would go to find you. See here how dearly He desires to show Himself to you. And then see Jesus in the way that Herod never did. See Him as your Redeemer, your Lord, your King. See Him as the One who brings to you forgiveness and life and salvation. See Him not in in great miracles or feats of strength or emotional feelings that can be so fickle. But see Him rather here in His Word. See Him here at the font in holy baptism as He washes away your sins and makes you a child of God and His brother and sister. See Him here at the altar for Holy Communion as He gives you again His body and blood for your forgiveness. See Him not, not, with, not with any pretense or quick fix to, uh, to, to fix all of the problems that this world might throw at you, but see Him coming with those nail holes in His hand that proclaim to you, I have overcome the world for you. And most of all, See Him here. Because it is here that you see the real Jesus. That living irony who loves the unlovable 
who gives hope to the hopeless, who makes his enemies his children, and who calls us home both here to worship and forever with him in heaven. A blessed irony. Amen. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.